Kenny Wallace, I'm just I'm just guessing that over the course of your life that you've had or or know about a funny fireworks story. Maybe when you were a kid, maybe you almost lost a finger, maybe a friend. Nothing funnier than that. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, I'm, I'm guessing back in the day, you guys had some fun with fireworks. Is that true? Yeah, we used to light bottle rockets and, and throw them in houses <laughs> and just see if we could hit the house because we're a bunch of Jefferson County rednecks. And I'm not saying it's funny, but it's like, oh, that was close. So, like, you know, you light a bottle rocket, and then you you know you, you try to throw it, but you got to let that you got to let that wick go pretty far. And 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 the thing is, the timing is <laughs> the timing is the you know like throw a baseball, like you, you rear back, and as soon as you're going forward, you throw it way in there, and hopefully it takes off. Well, a uh, couple times we've had it where it's taken off out of our hands, and uh, you know you you don't want to jack with fireworks too much, but little bottle rockets, but I will tell you a story that I I was there. I did not do it, but it's crazy. So Sterling Marlin, two time Daytona five hundred winner. He's from he's from Tennessee, right? Well he messes up and gives my brother Rusty Wallace gives his boy, Stephen Wallace, quarter stick of dynamite. Okay, <laughs> literally, and now I'm saying it right. Gives Stephen Wallace a quarter stick of dynamite. Well, we're up at Dover. And we're racing, but on the inside of the Dover track is like a horse track, you know, because it's you know, all about gambling up there at, at Dover. And so we are in, we are in our team van. Now, this is like 25 years ago, 20 years ago. And we're in the team van, and Steven takes this quarter stick of dynamite that Sterling Marlin gives him, likes it, throws it underneath our team van like six of us are in there. I'm going to tell you what, we about fainted. It, it was like you know it was like a bomb that went off in a bunker it, it, instead of going bang it went poof, poof, like that and it literally blew now no lie no exaggeration blew both rear tires blew them flat wow <laughs> oh my god so okay it's funny when nobody gets hurt but and I got another one do you have time oh yeah time for you buddy this one's hilarious so my, my brother Rusty Wallace I got to say, my brother Rusty Wallace. Assuming nobody that's if people are tuning in to five ninety right now, they might not know who the hell I am. So, my brother Rusty Wallace calls me one day and he goes, "Herman, what are you doing?" I said, "Oh, just here at the house, like on a Tuesday." And I'm living in North Carolina. He says, "Can you keep Stephen for a couple days?" And I start laughing. I said, "What did he do?" Well, that quarter stick of dynamite. So. They have a gate, right? But, so Stephen is lighting this quarter stick of dynamite, thinking it's going to be funny. He's by himself. At the gate, at the gate, his mom pushes the button. His mom's coming through the gate at the same time. <gasps> Stephen's lighting this quarter stick of dynamite. And Stephen goes, oh, my God, my mom's going to kill me. Uh-huh. Now, these quarter stick of dynamite, the wick is like a wax uh, wick, right? It's wax. It won't go out once you light it. Unless you smash it with a hammer. Steven is downstairs and he throws it in this toilet. True story. So, anyway, uh, he throws it in the toilet. The damn thing blows up, blows the toilet up, blows, blows the PVC out of the damn wall, out of the, the sheetrock. And, and Patty, Patty Wallace, Russell's wife, she went berserk. You little son of a. Stephen, he thought when he threw that thing in the toilet, it would go out of the toilet, the, the, all the plumbing out of the wall. So needless to say, Stephen spent a couple of, oh, it was kind of fun, actually, <laughs> with Uncle Kenny. <laughs> Man, I got to tell you, I'm coming down to his house probably for the fourth because I got a feeling there might be a couple of bush beers, barbecue, and there might just be a little pyrotechnics. Just I'm not I'm not warning the local authorities. I just have a feeling that could happen at Kenny's. Okay. At Kevin Gundaker. You know, the legendary Gundaker family, right? Gundaker, Better Homes and Gardens, you know, Gundaker, right? They're a very successful family. Well, Kevin Gundaker, which is, you know, you know Gordon is the legend. He, he's the wealthy man. He, he owns St. Louis, right? All the real estate. So Gordon's son, Kevin, you know, they own Tri-City Speedway, Granite City, Illinois. They're legends. Well, him and Rusty are like great friends. They take this damn uh, trash bag. And they go into the welding torch, 
you know, if you miss the settling and they fill this trash can full of the settling, they're going to make a bomb. And this is the great Rusty Walsh, right? NASCAR champion. Anyway, somehow it, it blew up in their face. And Rusty said they're in the Kirkwood Hospital. All their, their eyelashes, their eyebrows, they're singed off. Rusty said you can't see, can't hear. He said it was bad. Like it's okay now, but it was really bad at the moment. So they have a thing for blowing stuff up, but don't do this. These are cautionary tales. Don't don't do this. It's, it's sort of a PSA from our Kenny Wallace, uh, who mentioned earlier about Pat Maroon. I know you've been active on Twitter. Uh, the Oakville native wins the Stanley Cup. Now he's a free agent. Sense uh, the sense I think we're getting is that the Blues might want to look at some younger players, and he might make more money if he goes elsewhere, but. I think everyone knows the legend is already in cement for Pat Maroon. In a weird way, you get to go out on top. Like, his Blues career couldn't be any better than what happened. It'll never be better than that. And so maybe going to Edmonton or wherever for a couple of years, making some decent money, is not the worst thing. But rarely in sports is there a perfect exit. You know, it's almost everyone, as great as they are, accomplished as they are, the exits are usually, usually a little awkward. Listen, I agree with you 110%. I don't think I could have added to anything you, you just said. You know, and I, and I, I formulated my, my tweet yesterday because, you know, obviously, you know, the Blues, you know, I guess you could say timeline was all that, you know, Pat Maroon's leaving. And, and my point of view is, listen, Telegraph Road, maybe it's seven miles from me, not even, you know, that. But, you know, his, his, son, his son said something so cool. You know, they were still from Telegraph Road. You know, and it hits home, you know, our hero comes back. And, and my point was this. Thank you for winning us this Stanley Cup. Now get out of here and go make yourself about six, eight, ten million dollars so you can take care of your family. You know, we're all old enough to understand now, you know, the, the, the dirty part of professional sports, you know. And uh, I get it now. I understand it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of... What happened with Albert there, you know? Now, we could pay to keep our hero, but it seems like they all come back anyway. Look at Brett Hall, Jim Edmonds. You know, I, I mean, they all stay here. I mean, Ozzy Smith is from San Diego or somewhere, and uh, they all stay here. So, Pat's not going anywhere. I just, you know, I want him to make a lot of money now because you can't waste, you can't waste it away. And if they're going to pay you big money, you know, I'm not selfish anymore. We got our cup. Go, go make some money because that's what we want for our St. Louis homeboy. 